Hello, Rachel. How are we doing? I think we're all right. Are you we're all right? We're getting by, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We are, I think we are. it's you know we're all we're all finding it tough. Um, me and the family included, but yeah, we're we're good. Yeah, you're keeping positive. I think you have to. Yeah. So yeah. look, yeah, you do, you do. So look, I know you. Uh, so for those who don't know you, can you just tell us your name and perhaps the company that you're you're running? Yeah. 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 Uh, so I'm Rachel Savage, I'm Artistic Director of Vamos Theatre Company, which is a full mask theatre company based in Worcester, but we tour all over the world from China to Norway, well, when, when we can. Uh, from Liverpool to London, we play all different uh, theatres from the RSC to uh, other major theatres around the world to care homes and um, and hospital wards, so a whole mixture of different non-theatre settings as well. Which is, and I, the work that you guys have done at Vamos Theatre is something I do want to talk about. We're going to talk about that in a bit, but the first thing I want to talk about is something that you're really campaigning for and something that you're really pushing for is called the Wednesday Wave. Is, is, am I yeah. right? Or, or, is, or is it the wave on Wednesday where you're going, no, you've said it the wrong way around. <laughs> you've got it absolutely spot on. Yeah, it's yeah. the Wednesday wave. Um, and it started whilst we were in the first lockdown um, where I used to go on my daily walk and I used to go um, past my local care home. And when I went past that care home, I noticed a lady in um, her room um, and on the first day I walked past and I waved and she, she didn't know who I was. She didn't recognize me, but she did tentatively wave back. And then on the second day I went and it was as if she was waiting for me and she knew the drill and she was suddenly excited that I was there and waved back. And then it's kind of grown from there where I now go and visit her three, four times a week. Um, I've noticed a real change in her where at the beginning she was, she used to get up on her feet that would make me quite nervous. I remember one day I was there thinking, oh God, I don't know if I want her to be getting up I, because I know about the dreaded fall and about how dangerous those falls can be. Um, and there was a carer in the top window saying, oh, do you know Hazel? And I said, well, I'm making friends with Hazel, but I, I'm glad to have now known her name. And I said, is she all right on her feet? And they said, yeah, no, she's great on her feet. She's really independent. So I learned that she was called Hazel. Um, I learned that she was independent. I've since met her daughter and got her telephone number. So I can now go and call and, and phone and speak to her. Um, and it just made me think about the thousands of residents in care homes under lockdown you know as i've said we're finding it tough we are we can't it's undeniable but imagine if actually you're in a care home where you can't see any of your loved ones um and it made me think about how the difference that i saw in hazel when i when i go to see her but the difference that i feel when i go to see her and and how simple it is and even on grey days, sometimes my husband would say, oh, for God's sake, get out the door, take the dog and go and see Hazel because she'll turn you around. And it does. It really turns me around. So I started the Wednesday Wave, um, which if you think about the, the clap for carers on a Thursday, it's as simple as that. But every Wednesday from three o'clock, what I'm really trying to do is connect primary schools and care homes. And that's what's happened. So um, on your walk home, um, it's it's as simple as that. You see a care home or you see where perhaps somebody is from your neighbourhood who you know is isolating. My next door neighbour is out there every Wednesday. He's been shielding since March and the school kids go past and he counts how many waves he gets each Wednesday now. Wow. And um, so it's, it's that simple. It's just human connection. You know, what we are all missing is human connection more than anything else and so it's trying in a in a world where we can't see our friends and families and we can't hug them but we can wave to each other's and i assume do do people uh, need permission uh, i assume you don't need permission to wave do you you can you can wave to anyone can't you or... well you'd have, you'd have thought so it's um 
you know, we are all living in very odd times. I have received an email from somebody saying this has been banned in my care home. We're not allowed to wave. We're not allowed oh. to go on <laughs> window visits. I know it's it's shocking. Um, so I say, I say, yeah, yeah, wave, 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 wave. How can that in any way be harmful or or illegal or you know you have to be careful yeah you're in a you're in your groups of either one or two you're not in you're not you, you keep your social distancing all this stuff but you know it's common sense yeah. stuff but um i assume it's that thing isn't it because it's a way but it's not saying that you're looking for permission to go into the care home or anything else all it is is you're just smiling at, and you've got to bear in mind it's a stranger and you're just waving to them and smiling and that's that's it. You're just making that connection, which can be for a millisecond, 10 seconds, 20 mm. seconds, a mm. minute, and mm. then just moving on. I, 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 yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, I mean, it, the launch day was amazing where we went down to Rushwick Care Home, which is in Worcester, and linked up with the local primary school. And we didn't know if anybody was going to come and the tv cameras were there and i was thinking oh i don't know if anybody's going to turn up for this and then the the vicar came who was very charismatic and the head teacher of the local primary school came and the kids came down and the look of the face on the faces of the residents when they saw those young children jumping up and down and waving that's when you see the joy and that energy connecting of um, yeah. on both sides and a little boy was interviewed and he just kind of summed it up and he said it makes us all feel sad that we can't see each other but it makes us all feel happy that we can yeah totally there, there is something so beautiful about just having that connection whether it's whether it's a smile or whether it's a wave it just connecting us all together I just seem to have lost you for a little bit now, Rachel. Are you still there? We'll get you back. Ooh. Are you back? Yeah, you've got me back. You got yeah, you back. I got you back. This, yeah, I dropped yeah. out then. Didn't yeah, I? no, no problems. <laughs> We all drop out. So. Even with my magic plug, I'm still... With, your, with your magic plug, you dropped out. So <laughs> I just say, it's so wonderful though, isn't it? With all of us, how great we feel. I, it's that concept of just a smile, just a connection, just a wave. And, and, mm. and you know, that concept of, especially where you've talked about people in care homes, but even when on your daily walk out, if somebody just smiles at you or even waves at you, it really makes your day. You're just kind of like, wow, yeah. people people care about me and I yeah. care about them as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it costs nothing. And of course, it's not only um, elderly people in care homes. I discovered, whilst during this, doing this campaign, that I've got a care home down the road that's for adults with learning disabilities. And so each Wednesday now, my next door neighbour comes round and says, right, are we off to go and we can see Doug first? And then we go down to the, to the care home for the adults with learning disabilities. And it was brilliant. Last week, and we now know each other's names, Lewis was waiting for us. And we turned up and he just went, you're late. <laughs> and we were. We were two minutes late. <laughs> Come on. Have you, got, have you got to that stage yet where you were kind of like, oh, no, it's Wednesday. I don't want to go past the care home and wave. Do you know what? It's... I don't know about you, but the the thing about working from home and working um, digitally so much is I'm not taking any breaks. So I get to a Wednesday at three o'clock and think, thank God for that. I'm actually going to take a break and go for a walk and get out there. So no, it's, it's if nothing else, it's, it's kicked my ass to go out and take a break, which is fab. So anyone out there who wants to do this, they can do this. They don't need permission of any type. You, you just go past the care home, and just wave, um, and even if they have, they don't need to put anything in their window to say they're participating, do they? No, you just, they, they can just wave. 
So we, we have, for care homes who want to participate, we have got posters um, that they can download. If they go to the Wednesday Wave, the yeah. Wednesday Wave, it's all linked to our website and there's a whole page on it about how you can take part. Um, there's posters that you can download, there's posters that you can download and you can colour in. Um, there's different activities and ways in which to get in touch with your local primary school. What I have said to people who, live, who are living alone um, and want to take part is not to put a poster up in their window because that can then um, advertise that they're living alone and that they're vulnerable and let's not do that. Um, and so that I've said call around to your neighbours and let them know that you want to take part. And, or there's, there's another thing that some people are doing where they're drawing around their hand and putting their hand in the window. And that's kind of a sign of us all just trying to stay connected on either side of the glass, either that we're joining and then taking part and saying, yeah, I pledge to go out and wave, or that you'll be waiting, waiting for a wave on Wednesday. And, and there's no set time. You can do this, well, within reason. I'm not saying go past somebody's house at three in the morning uh, and sort of <laughs> wave in. <laughs> yeah. We put it from three o'clock p.m. So we yeah. said from three o'clock so that it links in with the schools walking by and that's when you get the kind of crowds of people going past which is which yeah. is lovely that's when you get the energy out on the streets so everyone's kind of doing it together and like yeah. with anything no masks or no clown masks or anything else going past <laughs> no thank you <laughs> oh good no yeah. it, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing that you guys are doing I, I really do that how long are you planning on this to, to carry on for with this Wednesday wave well it's the the, the campaign like the um, club carers is going on for 10 weeks and so it, it, the last one is on the 16th of December um, I won't stop going to wave at Hazel you know I think that's the other thing that people have said Oh, it's out on Wednesday from three o'clock. But what happens if I'm going past on a Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning or a Friday at 2 p.m.? It's like, you know, it's actually a campaign that just kind of instigates. If it instigates that you start making a connection within your local community, then then keep waving and wave at whatever time you like. I, I, I think it's wonderful. I think we should just wave at everyone. I, I, there's, yeah. I, I, I actually remember... Um, we used to uh, we used to drive up and we used to get to this junction and when you looked up there was a, some, a block of flats just in front of us and about the second floor there was this elderly lady who would just sit there and she would look out the window and we got to the stage where yeah. when we drove up it didn't matter what time it was she'd always be looking out and we'd wave and she'd wave yeah. back and it was just that moment you know just that little connection mm. and it was something mm. that she was always looking forward to and we yeah. were also looking forward to it because we'd say in our minds, oh, when we get there, she'll be there, we'll wave. I, I think yeah. sadly she's passed away now. But it was always that yeah. thing of she was anticipating it and we were anticipating it. Yeah. And we had that little connection, uh, which is yeah. just wonderful. Brings me now yeah, on to uh, the work that you guys do. Vamos Theatre, you know, worldwide renowned, as you've said, from China mm. to Norway, you know, mm. um, yeah, so I hope you didn't bring back coronavirus. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> no, it was some time ago. We it was some time ago. Yeah. Okay, we'll let you on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So really, I was just going to find out more about your work because you do a, a lot of. Is it is it mask work, workshops and mask theatre as well? Yeah. So full mask theatre sounds sounds a little bit odd until you see it, and then you go, oh, "This isn't at all odd. This is really incredibly accessible." So a full mask covers your entire face, which means that you don't speak, and so all the performance work is done through nonverbal communication. That when you see it, it's funny because we get audiences who come in. And if then they're, they're new to Vamos, we call them the Vamos Virgins. We get the Vamos okay. Virgins in and they sit there for the first five minutes thinking, oh, no, full mouth theatre. They're not speaking, not going to be able to understand it. And within two minutes, people are laughing and they're laughing because they've understood. And they're suddenly going, oh, my God, I can understand every single second that's happening on this stage. And how can I understand it? And they can understand it essentially because the actors do have a script and they have a script inside their head and they have very simple and 
naturalistic gestures in order to be able to connect with their, the audience and communicate with them exactly what they're thinking. So what Hallmark Theatre does is it pulls the audience in to get them to start interpreting. And in interpreting, you have a very close um, connection intellectually but then you have a really easy connection down to their heart. So you can, so that it's incredibly um, thought provoking and, and feeling provoking. It's, it's incredibly empathetic. Um, and, uh, and, and of course, because there's no language, it can also tour all over the world and there, there are no barriers of language. And I assume for the audience, they're creating their own narrative. Yes, they are, yeah. Yeah, and people's, you know, we're, we're amazed at how accessible our theatre is for Finding Joy was touring at the RSC for a whole audience of people living with dementia. Um, we toured the best thing to the National Star College for a whole audience of uh, non-verbal adults um, with learning disabilities. And people make their own narrative, but people who have said, my residents don't sit still for five minutes because they don't connect or my students I can't keep them connected and sat down for 10 minutes they absolutely stay with it because there is this this connection and as you say the making of your own narrative so it's um it's compelling and and so easy to connect with I, I, I feel that there's this connection with Wednesday Wave as well. Yeah, so the work I make, it's always about giving a voice to those who don't have one. Um, it's about stories that I have researched and that have a special place in my heart. And all of the stories are always about how do we make human connections. From a show that we made, which was Finding Joy about living with dementia, to a show about post-traumatic stress in the military. They're all about families and connections and the minutiae of life. And um, yeah, so that's exactly where the Wednesday wave is. It's our, it's our own living performance on our doorstep that we can still all go out and connect with. And you can be a performer. <laughs> you can be a performer. So I was actually doing a show the day before lockdown, which I can also talk to you about, but um, we uh, outside a care home and as we left, it was on a Wednesday and then a whole group of people turned up and started waving. And because I'd left the music on from our show, they then started dancing outside the care home. Oh. They were there to do the Wednesday wave. It turned into a performance. Wow, that's beautiful. Brilliant. That is lovely. Brilliant. So, how how did you get involved in this? What made you go into this particular create this? I don't know. Are, are you a pioneer of this work? Yes. Yeah, so, I founded Vamos Theatre fifteen years ago. Um, I was before that. I worked for ten years with Trestle Theatre Company. Mm -hmm. Now, many schools will have uh, a box of Trestle masks in their drama cupboard. And so I worked with Trestle for 10 years. And actually, I studied Trestle at, um, at school myself. And that's when I discovered Full Mass Theatre at the age of 13, which was quite a long time ago. And, and was just hooked. And um, so Trestle stopped doing mask work when I, after 10 years of being with them. And so that's when I, I left and then started carrying the mantle. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was after that. So, but I think the, the work that I do with Tressel is, and Dan Tressel is quite different now in that I make shows um, with, with deep subject matters. Um, so for example, the show that we just made is about end of life. Uh, there was a show about forced adoption in the 1960s. So they're always, they're stories that need telling and their stories that I can tell with lots of humour and lots of energy, and, um, but also with pathos and, and empathy as well. So they're, they're stories that make you think and make you feel and take you on a roller coaster of emotions. Mm -hmm. So for you, has this something you always wanted to get into or is it accidental? I know you, you talked about the fact that, you, you know, you obviously you did 
Trestle Theatre's work? Was, was this a natural step or was it a case of, oh gosh, I can't find anything. You know what, I'll just do masks. <laughs> um, I always wanted to be a politician. Oh, my wow. My mum told me not to. My mum told me to go into theatre. So I went into theatre and I went to drama school um, with people like David Tennant and and left at the end of it and decided that I wanted to direct. I, I, uh, that's what I um, specialised in at drama school. But I think when you first leave, you have to become a, I had thought I had to become an actor because I have to learn how to direct through acting. So I, um, I worked and worked and worked for, I don't know, 10, 15 years as a jobbing actor. Um, and then Trestle was the last company that I worked with and all kind of the one that I always wanted to work with because I'd I'd fallen in love with their shows from such an early age and I'd seen all their shows. So when I landed the job with them, I thought that's when I'd made it. Most people, when they get a job with a mass theatre company, they go, oh God, you know, I have to cover up my face. How dreadful for an actor. Whereas for me, it was the art form that I so... Um, so do that it was it was an absolute natural progression would you would you say for i was going to actually touch on a couple of things that you mentioned david tennant so you you yeah. you, you you were you were there at drama school with david tennant mm. what was he like then be honest really really boring he was such a good boy he was so well behaved and and lovely and he was in everybody's shows because he was so committed and dedicated uh yeah he was uh i used to live in um his flat his sister had a flat there and there was a few of us who were flatmates together and david was the kind of boy that would get me home get me home safely at the end of a drunken night you know he's just a very 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 lovely man and Gosh. deserves every single bit of success. I wanted to know whether you snogged him or fancied him. No, that's that's my biggest regret. <laughs> now, nobody fancied David Tennant at drama school. <laughs> nobody did. <laughs> nobody did. No. Gosh, that'll be the story to tell, won't it? Yes, I snogged him. I did. I was the first no. one. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Co coming back to your masks. So yeah. do you... You, you talk about politicians. Do you kind of go down that character, down, down that avenue as well, whereby suddenly you've got characters maybe who are politicians, or or, or you, you kind of have a mask that kind of portrays that. I'm almost thinking one of uh, something with a bit of hair on top, which almost looks like a Boris Johnson figure or Trump figure nowadays. Which, are, uh, but y y y your your masks are quite plain, aren't they? And it's just. Just in terms of the shape of the mouth, is it yeah, on the, on no, the they're eyes? Really our, our masks are really naturalistic. Um, no. They kind, they were a lot more cartoony, and with 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 the designer um, made them a lot more naturalistic because the subject matters are so much more naturalistic. There are some masks who there's one mask that we call the Margaret Thatcher mask. I didn't ask for it to be made to look like Margaret Thatcher. She turns up, so I open the best presents I get is when I open my um parcel of masks that has come from my designer Russell Dean um, and you open them up and that, so I write a character outline um, I write about their journey within the show I write about the kind of emotions that they have to portray um, and then I open up the box and sometimes think oh brother he's amazing there's Danny I can see exactly who that is and then I open up the next character and go why have I got Margaret Thatcher in this box? I didn't ask for Margaret Thatcher. So uh, I'd say, no, I steer away from politicians. Some people, you know, their, their faces not dis dissimilar to anybody else's faces. Yeah, but, um, but what I do do is when I look at, um, you might do the same thing. You know, when you see um, politicians during um, election time and they're giving all the speeches or they're up against each other, is looking at their body language and their tone of voice and their pace and that they, the way they speak. And um, you can tell when they've been directed and you can also tell when they need direction. I would love to work with Keir Starmer. He just needs unlocking a bit. Great bloke, but he does need unlocking. You need to, you need, you need to write to him or, I don't know, get in touch with his personal secretary and say, listen, if you need some top tips, firstly, come and yeah. see my show, join in with Wednesday Wave, 
and then I'll give you a few top tips uh, 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 around that. And um, I, 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 I know what you're saying, but I'm not going to get into politics. Um, no, no, forbid. Yeah. Uh, what can we expect from you, from you guys now? In fact, I was just going to go back to the masks. With, with each of the masks, then, do you kind of once you've used them, do you kind of put them aside and not use them again for a different project, or do you do you kind of? go, no, we can use them for many other different types of projects, or is it well, a case always, of they, oh. they always stay in the, the, the repertoire. We've got a whole wall of masks in our office. Um, and so say, for example, one character, she was made and she first was, she had a tiny little cameo part. She was um, an usher at the cinema scene. And then two shows later, she's got the main part, it's Joy. And so there are some characters who also, when I open up the box and I go, oh, no, she's completely and utterly wrong, she's not right, she will then, I'll, I'll give her a couple of years and I won't forget about her and then she'll get, she'll get cast years down the line. So no, we always, always keep the masks. And also you, you put a different wig on a mask and you okay. put a different costume on a mask and it, and it really changes the look so people don't recognise them. Okay. But we, we have about, I don't know, eight to ten new masks commissioned for every single show. But it might be that you get an actor and you say, OK, so I've got this little cameo role and the mask just doesn't suit them. So I can go, I can try three or four different masks on them before I find the one that really suits their own natural physicality. So in terms of the, the, the masks themselves, do they have a specific colour or do you kind of go, because then suddenly you, you, it can be a bit of a minefield, you know, in the sense yeah, where yeah. you're suddenly kind of yeah. going, well, wait there, this is a white mask, this is a black yeah. black mask, this is a brown mask. Yeah. Whereas if you suddenly yeah. have a, a yellow mask or a purple mm -hmm. mask, then mm -hmm. there's, mm -hmm. you know, there's different kind of things. Is, is that... Yeah. So we cast actors who only play the skin tone of the mask that they are portraying. So in a, which means an Asian mask will be played by an Asian actor uh, and so forth. In um, our BBC commission that was recently on during lockdown called How Hard Is Waving, I really wanted a Chinese carer to be part of the, the cast of four. And, um, and my daughter's half Chinese. So I was able to say to her, come on, Rosa, I really, really need you to play this small part of this carer because I want you to be, I want you to be all the things that we, we deliver a lot of um, training for carers in terms of how to read nonverbal communication, in terms of how to think about your voice, how to be empathetic, how to be playful, actually playful and accepting um, when looking, and caring, looking after and caring for those living with dementia. And so I was able to do that because she is Chinese. I wouldn't put a Chinese mask on somebody that isn't Chinese. Mm -hmm. And I assume, again, it, it, there's that thing, isn't it, where it, it would create a different narrative of uh, a case of, say you had an Asian person playing a white person or a black person playing a white person. But then I assume it depends how deep you want to get behind it, whether the mask comes off, which is almost like a reveal. But then that's yeah, a different yeah. that's a different kind yeah. of story, and perhaps but, not the work that you're doing. But it, it's but you're it, right; it does it does change the story. So, say for example, our show Finding Joy, um, we've toured it for so many years now, and a few years ago we retoured it, and Rayo Patel played one of the characters, which meant that when he was in a scene. So it's all about um, a lady goes to, based on a true story, a lady goes to A&E, has uh, had a bad fall and, um, and has the different characters at A&E from a consultant who the true story went, um, my friend took her mum to A&E, she's living with dementia and all the consultant kept doing was taking her handbag off her. Now, you wouldn't take a teddy bear off a child, and so why take a handbag, which is often the anchor of somebody living with dementia in that generation of women, and yet that's what he kept doing. And the, the gorgeous nurse, male nurse, kept trying to give the um, 
handbag back. It's a piece of theatre within itself. So, but when we then, when I then cast Rayo and he was playing the gorgeous nurse, when the consultant who comes in, who's high status, arrogant, I could use lots of words, which I'm probably not going to. Um, <laughs> when we then put Rayo into the scene with his Asian mask, the consultant also became racist because of the way in which he was playing and he was playing against this nurse character. And it's, you, you, you said it at the beginning where you said you almost kind of open a whole can of other, other storylines and other levels of stories. Um, but I love that and it's fascinating, so. Yeah, no, 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 that, that, that is yeah, wonderful. Really so what, what is next for you guys? Because obviously in terms of lockdown, as you've said, it's been very, very difficult for many organisations uh, in, in theatre and just generally for people as well. Uh, what, what are you guys doing to, to survive? Are you still, I know you've done stuff, you've done short videos which are available on BBC uh, iPlayer, I think. Are they still, are they still available? Or they... Yeah, they're on for about another eight months. Yeah. yeah. How Hard Is Waving is all available on iPlayer as well as our own YouTube as well now. We're busy. So the Wednesday wave came out of the BBC um, How Hard Is Waving uh, com commission. We are also, we've, I've made a show called Love Through Double Glazing which is myself and Sean Kempton, who's the Cirque du Soleil clown, out of work Cirque du Soleil clown. And, and in many ways, it's my, now my opportunity. Whilst he's usually off on tour all over the world, but um, he's not at the moment. So he and I have put together a, a two-hander, which plays outside care homes, and, it, and it's through their windows. So we usually at this time would be touring two care homes and playing inside the care home. So Love Through Double Glazing is the best we can do where actually we're performing right up uh, at wow. the window to a whole audience of people living in care homes. So we're touring that at the moment and that is a co-commission with the London International Mime Festival. Um, still, using, are... still using masks or no masks in this? Or... Uh, good question. So Sean plays three different clown characters and his clown is anarchic. I mean, God, it's really very exciting. It's exciting for me artistically as well, because I perform in this as a mask character. So it's also seeing the way that clown and mask work together. Um, and also my dog's in it. So my dog who performed in uh, the BBC project as well is in fact, here you go, she's here. This is Nora. She's become one of Hello, the most um, sought after and adored little dogs. Oh, wow. And of course, <clears throat> just on the back, she's the main character that you take her to care homes and she's the main character that people want to see. So you know what? it's really if, interesting. You know what? If you held up a, loads of dogs and went, which one's mine? I, I would have chosen that particular dog and gone, <laughs> definitely. So um, I, I, do, do, do dogs look like their owners or is it owners look like their dogs? I don't, I don't know. Is it all, but they're dead, so. <laughs> so, uh, in fact, uh, who combs her? Or, 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 does she comb you? Uh, I comb her, so I like to have a bottle of wine. I put her on the ironing board and I get the kickers out. So, no, she's, she's a dog that definitely is screamed at home. Um, and then the other thing that we're doing alongside Love Through Double Glazing is this year we should have been touring two care homes and we fundraised for it. And of course, we're not able to do that. So, instead, we have I've made something called Join a Box. And it's about a shoe, shoe box size, and it comes full of props from our um, partner organization called Jabadeo from all different games and activities and films and playlists. I made 10 different playlists this, this weekend. And an activity for every day through December. So it's an advent calendar of activities from the 1st of December to Christmas day. And it takes people through a whole kind of list of, okay, guys, today you're going to do this. Today you're going to pump up those giant balloons and play it along with this playlist. Today the scarves are coming out um, to watch this film today. Um, yeah, it's, it's been that, another big piece of work. And that playlist and those things that people can do, is that something which is available to everyone that they can access? 
There are 50 boxes and we're sending them out to care homes for free. Okay. I have been thinking this weekend, this is such a lot of work. I wonder if we might make this available to everybody. You've gone. You're still there, Rachel? She's back. Oh, I am. I am. You're back, back. you're back, you're back, you're back. So you, you're just saying that you're thinking about making it available. And, and the reason why I was saying that was it reminded me of a project. I think it was the uh, National Heritage that may have done it or, or one of those organisations about 50 things to do before you're 11 and three quarters. Right. And so when you, when you said about doing that thing, I thought, wow. That's really kind of cool where you kind of, you know, this whole thing of where people are going, I'm at home, what shall I do today? I'll watch Netflix, you know, that whole kind of mm. thing. So the, 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 I yeah. was just thinking this, this is almost something where you kind of go, oh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. I've, I've never fancied doing that. I, I'm not saying that people can't think for themselves, but sometimes it's always good to have options. You know? I think it's also during lockdown. And I think particularly when you are a... They, they're called activity coordinators in care homes. I think sometimes it's really lovely to just be told what to do when you are at your, your energy level limit. Um, and it's, yeah, so I, I, it, it, it's a box sent to care homes to let residents know that we want to be with them as soon as possible, but also to let the brilliant staff know that we're thinking about them. Well, look, Rachel, it's been so lovely chatting to you. Um, what are your web addresses and where can people not contact you now, but, you know, just generally? <laughs> so it's Famos Theatre. So it's famostheatre.co.uk and all our different social uh, media links are all at Famos Theatre. Well, listen, it, it's so wonderful with the stuff that you're doing. I just love it. I just love this whole thing about connecting and uh, it's, it's communications key for all of us you know it doesn't mm -hmm. matter about what your background is and what and kind of what level because there's different levels because people think you can't connect even sometimes when you think somebody's not communicating you can see that maybe it's a twinkle in their eye or just a, mm -hmm. a little movement of their lip or something so yeah i think it's wonderful thank you so much for joining us i really appreciate you taking time not out. At all. Thank, thank you Rachel. You. lovely to speak to you take care